Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Legends of West Indies Cricket here on Cricket 360 Friday Night Lime. This is the ninth in the series of 33 in alphabetical order and today we look at Lance Gibbs, the right arm leg uh, off spinner, I'm sorry, from Guyana. Lance Gibbs, also known as Mr. Pressure, who is the only bowler to take more than 300 test wickets with an economy rate of less than two runs per over. Answer, Lance Gibbs, 309 test wickets in 79 matches, conceding just 1.98 runs per over. He was helped, of course, by his best figures against India in Bridgetown in 1961-62. 53.3 overs, 37 maidens, 38 runs, 8 wickets. Several other performances, including one for 68 of 57 overs against England at the Queen's Park Oval in 67-68. Gibbs was the first spinner, the first West Indian, and the second bowler in the history of the game to take more than 300 test wickets, the first being England's Fred Truman. He made his debut as a 19-year-old for British Guyana against the MCC in 1953-54, picking up a couple of wickets, including that of Dennis Compton. The next few seasons saw him play a handful of matches. In fact, when Gibbs made his test debut against Pakistan in Port of Spain in early 1958, he had played just five first-class matches, claiming 11 wickets. It was mainly a four-wicket haul in the final of the quadrangular series against Barbados in 56-57 that earned him the test spot. However, he played a significant role in the victory on his debut, bowling out the tail with three second inning wickets. Lancelot Lance Richard Gibbs, born September 29, 1934 in British Guyana, now Guyana, claimed 309 scalps in a test career that spanned from February 1958 to February 1976, 18 years and included 79 matches at an average of 29.09. He was a master of off-spin bowler, best described as a symphony of spin bowling orchestrated with intelligence, craftsmanship, and determination. His short, whippy, swirling, looping action with Gary Sobers close by at a short leg slip ready to snare yet another catch is one of the memorable sights in all of Test cricket. He was also an outstanding fieldsman to his own bowling and a gully specialist where he held most of his 52 catches. One descriptive of, of, one descriptive of him sorry, is that of an electrified tarantula with legs hopping, arms swinging and fingers ripping. It should be mentioned that the old LBW law of using your bat and pad, which allowed batsmen such as Cowdery, Boycott and Graveney to pad out successfully, worked, against, worked successfully against Gibbs, taking more wickets but also accounted partly for the low scoring rate per over of his bowling and a longer strike rate than most of the great West Indian bowlers. Tall and lanky, with long fingers, he is argu arguably the greatest exponent of the art of pure right arm leg off spin bowling who has ever played the game and has the company of Sonny Ramadan and Alf Valentine, not forgetting the incomparable all rounder Sir Garfield Sobers, as other top class spinners from the region. His pronounced spin, nagging consistency, accuracy, and variety of flight, line, turn, bounce, length, and pace befuddled the greatest batsmen during the Gibbs era of West Indian cricket. 
add to these is unlimited stamina and determination and you have the equation of a tireless and effective performer whether it be for his school his club british guyana slash guyana the west indies burnley whitburn warwickshire or the world 11. painful calluses worn to the bone almost with the order of the day during his playing career brought about by the perpetual rubbing of leather and seam on flesh. Later in his career, he developed and added to his armory, the quicker, straighter one, adding to his already wide repertoire. Mr. Pressure is how he best characterized himself, applying pressure to batsmen, especially the new incoming ones, after a, a wicket had fallen, sometimes with four to six fielders crowding around the bat and having to make correct decisions to six different vari variations of delivery. This is best evidence in a spell on an unresponsive Kensington track in March 1962 against us India, where after a stubborn partnership was broken, after bowling 40 overs for just 31 runs, he produced a spell of 15.3 overs, 14 maidens, eight wickets for six runs to end with his best test performance of 53.3 overs, 37 maidens, 38 runs, 8 wickets. West Indies won that game by an innings of 30 and 30 runs. Gibbs recalls that my first long pants was my cricket trousers and is one of the best tellers of cricket tales and history, possessing a sharp mind and wit. The cousin of former West Indian captain Clive Lloyd, he attended St. Ambrose Anglican Primary and Day Commercial Standard High Schools in British Guyana, now Guyana, and started on his path to international stardom at the age of, age of just 14 at the DCC, the Marara Cricket Club, practicing with friends across from his home at the time. He credits the late Berkeley Gaskin, the late West Indies cricketer and administrator, administrator as his mentor and inspiration and the impetus for him wanting to play professionally. Gibbs made his step test debut as mentioned before versus Pakistan at the Queen's Park Oval in February 1958 and played his last test versus Australia at Melbourne Cricket Club in 1976. He made his ODI debut versus England at Headingley in 1973 and played his last ODI versus Sri Lanka at Old Trafford on, in June 1975. In his first test, his spells against Pakistan of 12, 2, 38, 1 and 13.5, 6 maidens, 33 for 3 and a second inning score of 22, batting at number 9, not a sign of things to come in the batting departing department disappointingly. He headed the bowling averages 23.05 with 17 wickets in the four tests in that series. In the four tests played on his home ground in Georgetown, he captured 5 for 80 in the second innings, helping to defeat Pakistan after they had scored 408 in the first innings. In the 1960-61 away series in Australia, he took 19 wickets in three tests, including three wickets or four balls in the second innings in Sydney. In the next test in Adelaide, he took a hat-trick, the wickets of Mackay, Grout and Misson. In 1963, West Indies scored England and Gibbs had another su highly successful series, taking 26 wickets at 21.30 average, including 5 for 59 and 6 for 98 in a 10-wicket triumph at Manchester. Further successful series followed. In eight successive series from 61 to 68, 69, he never took fewer than 18 test wickets and took five or more test wickets in an innings on 12 occasions. He's one of the few bowlers who has taken over 1,000 first-class wickets. His 330 matches yielding 1,024 wickets at an average of just 27 points. Two, two. Because he could not bowl a googly, he switched from leg spin to off spin. And as they say, the rest is history. He credits his work ethic of hard work and patience and a regimen of rigorous and dedicated practice 
as the keys to his success. The West Indies tour of Australia in 75-76 was Gibbs' final one. Playing in all six wickets, he took 16 wickets at over 40, his worst against the Aussies. He passed the milestone of 300 test victims, only the second to do so, as mentioned before, after England's Fred Truman at Perth by dismissing Gary Gilmore. His 309th and final test wicket was again that of Gilmore. He was also the first spinner to cross 300 wickets in tests, ending his career, as mentioned previously, 309 wickets, 79 tests, 29.09 average. Gibbs represented Burnley and Whitburn in the Lancashire and Durham leagues respectively. Warwickshire, 67, 68 to 73, he enjoyed his best season in 1971 with 131 wickets at an average of 18.89 in the English County Championship and South Australia in the Sheffield Shield competition. In 1970, after a winter spent again with South Australia, he took a career best of 8 for 37 against Glamorgan. In 1964, in the Durham Senior League, he helped Whitburn win the championship with 126 wickets at a meagre average of 8.53. In 1973, at the age of almost 39, Gibbs made his one-day international debut against England at Leeds as part of the Prudential Trophy Tournament and played only two further ODIs against England two days later at the Oval and a single outing against Sri Lanka at Manchester in the 1975 World Cup. He also had stints with the World Eleven teams over the period 65 to 73, playing 11 matches and with South Australia in 69-70 playing in nine games. After a 23-year-long first-class career in 1953 to 1976, he retired after playing his final test again against Australia at Melbourne in February 1976 at the age of 41, a testament to his longevity in the game he played passionately and proudly for the West Indies for so many years. Gibbs singled out has singled out ex-Australia captain Ian Chappell as the batsman he had the most difficulty dislodging because of his excellent footwork and ability to play spin well. Some of the awards and accolades awarded to Gibbs. He was one of Wisden's 1972 Cricketers of the Year and the PCA is the Professional Cricketers Association Player of the Year 1971 both for his outstanding English County season. He was awarded the Carl Nunes Trophy in 1967. He's a USA and ICC Hall of Famer. He has represented the West Indies cricket team's sponsor as their cricket ambassador for many years and also managed West Indies team to England and to South Africa in 91 and 2009 respectively. Gibbs has a street in Queenstown, Guyana named after him. The street earlier known as Ammon Street is now known as Lance Gibbs Street. Well, we've come to another in the, in the series of Legends of West Indies Cricket here on Cricket 360 Friday Night Lime. We want to thank the producers, the technical support and others for making this show a success. We hope you enjoyed it and until the next edition where we will be looking at uh, number 10, Larry Gomes, Mr. Dependable. This is Nasa Khan saying goodbye.